Broadly speaking, there are two main types of ear infections. Those that occur in the ear canal, known as otitis externa, and those that occur behind the eardrum, the middle ear. Both are common in adults and kids and have different features. Let's look at them one at a time. Otitis literally means inflammation, and externa tells us that it's confined to the external part of the ear canal only, and it doesn't affect the eardrum. The ear canal is a narrow, warm, blind-ended tunnel which makes it a perfect environment for germs to grow. Otitis externa is caused by an infection of the skin of the ear canal. They can be bacterial, fungal, or even a yeast infection. Some things make you much more prone to getting an infection of the skin on the ear canal, such as swimming. It's much more common in regular swimmers due to water and some of the irritants in chlorinated water getting into the ear canal, so much so that it's even called swimmer's ear. Warm weather is another cause. Hot, humid and sweaty weather makes the ear canal even more of a perfect environment for germs to flourish. Skin problems too. If you have something like eczema or psoriasis and the ear canal is affected, it can increase the chance of infection. The skin may feel irritated and flaky too in these circumstances. Also, using things like cotton buds or scratching and poking inside the ear canal can damage it. Excess ear Wax can trap water and debris and increase the infection risk too. Otitis media or a middle ear infection can also cause discharge which falls onto the ear canal which can cause otitis externa. So what are the symptoms? Most people have symptoms like itch, watery ear discharge or a slightly dulled hearing or a full sensation in the ear and sometimes discomfort or pain. It usually affects only one ear at a time, but both ears can be affected simultaneously. Most people have the symptoms for a short period of time and it resolves quickly with treatment. For some people, they can get it again and again. And if you have it for more than three months, it's called chronic otitis externa. The best way to diagnose it is for a healthcare professional to look into the ear and see the ear canal directly using an instrument called an oroscope. Sometimes though, if the symptoms sound like otitis externa, we may not always need to examine you and may be happy to provide recommendations for treatment over the phone or a video call. The mainstay of treatment is ear drops or sprays, usually containing an antibiotic to deal with the infection and a weak steroid to dampen down any inflammation. Normally you take this treatment for about five to seven days and things should settle by then. Sometimes if the cause of your ear inflammation is due to something like a skin disease like eczema, we may just prescribe steroid drops rather than steroid drops and an antibiotic. This is much more likely the case if there's itch and no pain or discomfort. Sometimes a particular course of sprays or drops may not work and an alternative but similar treatment may be needed. In some cases, the infection may be caused by a fungus which requires an antifungal treatment or a middle ear infection which may need a stronger antibiotic. Some people also use over-the-counter painkillers like ibuprofen or paracetamol if pain is a particular feature. And if you have flaky or waxy ears, it can be useful to have your ears professionally cleaned with a machine with suction or water as that may be the cause for irritation and infection. In some rarer cases, if the infection is severe or if you have a weak immune system or it spreads to the outer ear, a course of tablet antibiotics may also be prescribed as well as the spray. If the ear canal is very swollen, we sometimes use something called an ear wick. This is when we use some gauze which is soaked in ear drops or ointment and we gently push it into the ear to help the medication to get to the whole ear canal. It's not that common that we need this, but it does work really well. Just like with eye drops too, people can be allergic to the components and preservatives that are found in ear drops. The ear symptoms or discharge may become worse if this is the case, and it can usually be managed by using an alternative low preservative eardrop. Some people get otitis externa once in a blue moon, but for some people it's a regular annoyance and nuisance. In this case especially, there are things you can do to prevent them occurring in the first place, or to prevent a simple otitis externa becoming a chronic problem. Don't use cotton wool buds to clean your ears. We used to get taught in medical school that the smallest thing that should go in your ear is your elbow. The moral is to not put anything in your ear. 
period. Even to clean it, it damages and irritates the delicate skin that can push wax further in too. Wax is designed to come out by itself when you wash and sleep. You can clean the outside of the ear, that's fine, with a cloth or alcohol-free baby wipes if you must, but nothing inside. Keep your ears dry. Try to get water out of your ears by tipping your head. Don't put anything in there to dry them. Try to keep them dry if you're prone to otitis externa by plugging the outside of your ears with cotton wool and white paraffin when you shower and maybe wearing earplugs and a tight fitting cap if you swim. Prevention drops too are useful, especially if you're prone to inflammation. You can use these drops which usually contain things like acetic acid or peroxide that prevents infection and you can use it before or, or after swimming and if wax is a problem there are wax dissolving drops too. You can buy both of these directly from your pharmacy. If you wear hearing aids, wash the mold daily in warm soapy water while you're having treatment for an infection. Of course, if things don't improve or you're unsure what's going on, do seek professional help. Otitis media is the other common type of ear infection. This is inflammation of the middle ear rather than the outer ear. The middle ear is the small space behind the eardrum, which is normally filled with air. This area can sometimes get filled with mucus, especially when you have a cold. If you have mucus, there permanently. This is known as glue ear and it's really common in kids. If this mucus becomes infected with germs then you can get otitis media, a middle ear infection. Some of the symptoms of otitis media are similar to the symptoms of otitis externa like discomfort or pain or a decreased sense of hearing or a fuller sensation in the affected ear or ears. But there are other features that help us to distinguish a middle ear infection from an outer ear infection such as fever which is common or nausea or sickness and being more unwell or a foul smelling discharge secondary to a burst eardrum, all of these in the context of a middle ear infection. The history is often enough for us to distinguish between a middle and outer ear infection but an examination is always helpful. The main difference between a middle and an outer ear infection is that people are more unwell with a middle ear infection while otitis externa is often more of a persistent irritation. Most ear infections are self-limiting. They get better by themselves without treatment. Most symptoms will improve within three days and antibiotic doesn't always change this. Having said this, antibiotics may be appropriate or prescribed if the infection is severe and it hasn't settled after three days or there's discharge from the ear or if it's in a child under two who has a bilateral ear infection which increases the complication risk or there's a risk of complications due to another medical condition. In most circumstances you will be advised to wait and see for three days to see how things go with pain relief only if it's needed. In most cases it clears by itself. Often your healthcare professional will prescribe a delayed antibiotic prescription, a prescription you can use if things don't improve after two or three days or if things worsen. Glue ear is one of the complications which is a chronic mucus buildup secondary to repeated middle ear ear infections, especially common in kids. Eardrum perforation often happens in middle ear infections too, often associated with a significant relief of pain and this often usually heals within four weeks. Sometimes it doesn't heal and it requires a procedure to fix it where you need to go to the hospital. Mastoiditis is an infection that spreads from the middle ear to the bone behind the ear. You'll know this because it will be really painful and not getting better. It can be difficult to know whether your child or yourself needs to see a doctor with earache. Always consult one if your symptoms become suddenly worse or you become more unwell or if the illness seems severe. Also, if it doesn't seem to get better after three days or if the temperature is persistently raised or you have symptoms that you're not sure about. Middle ear infections are more difficult to prevent than outer ear infections as most middle ear infections are caused by viruses, the same common viral infections which circulate in the general population that your child is probably not yet immune to. They are the same viruses that cause common colds and coughs and tummy bugs. There isn't a huge amount you can do to prevent these other than the usual measures such as hand washing and eating and sleeping well to optimize your immune system. Thanks for watching. Till next time, stay healthy.